is going on today, you beautiful, blessed boys and girls. Hope you're having the greatest day of your life today. Today, guys, we're going to talk about a special topic and one that I think is very, very important and often most people just don't talk about because it can be kind of scary, kind of intimidating. But I'll be honest, it's one of the best things I've done over the last couple of years of my life that I've seen my life just go up in these higher directions that it never would have had I not had I not approached this. And that's when to cut certain people out of your life, when you kind of outgrow them, and how to go about that. What's the process around it? So this was sparked by a, a recent tweet that I uh, just put up. I'll put that tweet up right here. And that tweet said, cutting toxic people out of your life doesn't mean you hate them or wish ill upon them. It simply means you respect and love yourself more. Here's the thing, guys. Growth often comes at a cost. Now, for me, uh, up until I was about 34, 35 years old, I basically went to the bars a lot, uh, hung with buddies, complained about my wife, complained about other things. And then, you know, one day I made a decision. I'm not going to be this guy anymore. Like, I'm going to change my life and whatever that takes, I'm going to do that. So when I started to tell some of my buddies, hey, you know what, I know we go to the bars a couple days a week, that's just not gonna be me anymore. I did get a little backlash from some of them. Oh man, Ty thinks he's too good for this now. Well, no, it wasn't that I thought I was too good, it's just I wanted to go a different direction and that's okay. It doesn't mean I wish ill upon them. There's nothing wrong with going to the bar a couple days a week with your buddies. If that's the season of life you're in, more power to you. It just wasn't gonna be mine. And so, you know, I'm gonna go over today a, a few steps, I think, when you know enough is too much and then, you know, kind of where to go from there and how, how to approach some of these difficult conversations. Growth always comes at a cost. And I think you need to be prepared as you kind of journey through life to understand and say, hey, some people are just in my life for a season of time and that's okay. And not everybody is gonna come with me all, you know, 90 plus 100 years, however long you're blessed to live on this earth. Some people are just there for seasons, that's okay. The first thing I think you gotta ask yourself is when is too much too much? now? When I started getting razzed from a couple buddies and one in particular, kind of always putting me down in the group chat, kind of always, oh, Ty thinks he's too good for this now or whatnot, um, you know, it, it agitated me a little bit, you know, and, and I, and I, what I want to highlight here and emphasis here is maybe I didn't handle it perfectly correctly back then. Um, what I would do now, if I could go back and do it different, is instead of just saying, hey, I don't do this anymore, guys, and, and kind of in a judgmental tone almost, I would say, Hey guys, you know, I'm not really doing the bar thing anymore, but hey, I'm going to the gym every morning and I'd invite you to come with me. Hey, I'm going hiking every, every weekend and I'd love it if you come with me. Hey, you know, can we shoot hoops? Can we go play tennis? Can we do some of these active things instead of just go to the bar every time? And kind of give them an out to say, hey, you know what? This is kind of the direction I'm going. I'd love it if you join me too. So I think that's step one is, hey, you got to ask yourself, you know, if you're trying to move from one certain set of activities to another, will some of these people come join you or not? The second thing I'll, I'll get into here is I think you got to fire a warning shot. And if I'm honest, you know, the one buddy in particular, we were friends for 17, 18 years. I was in his wedding. He was in mine. Um, I love the guy, to be honest. I love his family. I, I love his kids, everything about it, right? But we just hit a season of life where, man, it, every time we were talking, it was just constant digs at me. Constant digs, man. Oh, you think you're this or that. Or it, it just became to the point where every time I talked to him, I felt my anxiety rise. Every time I saw him on the phone, I felt my anxiety rise. And so I just had to ask myself, you know, why am I allowing this? Um, and I think you need to ask yourself that question if you have a family member or a friend that, hey, every time you're with them, you kind of feel your vibration go from here to here. Why are you allowing that? How do we respond to that? So the first thing that I did is I called them out on it. And this is privately, not in a group chat, not in anything like that, is I just asked them for a phone call. And then on that phone call, I said, hey, man, you know, do you notice that I'm always building you up? I'm always encouraging you. No matter how crazy of an idea you might have, dude, I'm, I'm the first one there patting you on the back and saying, I hope you go crush it, you know? I'm the first one there saying you're a good dad and, and this and that, right? Why am I not getting that reciprocated? Is there something I'm doing that's, you know, that, can we have a hard talk around that? I think that should always be the first step is to approach that person with some grace, with some love, to try and take ownership of, hey, what can I do? What, why are we having this kind of conflict? You know, often, in a marriage or in whatever it might be, we, we go about it in a wrong way where, you know, we, we don't try and resolve the conflict. We just kind of ignore it. But that always, you know, I always say that creates a war within. If you continue to avoid those difficult and hard conversations, it's just going to eat away at your peace and eat away at your peace. If this isn't making me feel good or this feels like it's draining me all the time, I need to pause there and ask myself, when's it too much? And then have that difficult conversation. The next thing I think you need to do after that is you really need to decide, hey, if that, if that behavior that you don't like and you don't want to tolerate continues, 
then it's time to have a, that next hard conversation and that's gonna be the hardest one. And for me, what that looked like was calling my buddy and just saying, hey man, I'm never not gonna love you. I'm never not gonna pray for you. I'm always gonna root for you. And I truly hope that you and your family and you and your business and everything that you do in your life just produces amazing things. I'm gonna root for you my whole life. You've been my buddy for 16 years. You'll be my buddy forever. But I think we've just outgrown one another. We're going in different directions. I love you, but I'm not gonna allow this to continue. And at that point, I just said, you know, I, I'm gonna block you from social because you're commenting negatively under my social posts. You know, I'm gonna block your phone number because I get anxiety in it and you constantly are texting me negative things. I'm just not gonna allow that anymore. It almost got to the point where I felt like I couldn't even be the best husband, dad, and leader that I need to be in my house because I was wearing this stuff over here, man. I, I can't believe that this guy would say this stuff about me and I wasn't even fully present where I was. So again, if it's stealing your peace, it's just too expensive and you've just gotta realize it's okay, man. I don't wish ill will upon him. I don't hate him. In fact, just the opposite. I love him and I pray for him. We just went in different directions and that's okay. I would encourage you to have a healthy break. Don't go into it with this like argative kind of mindset of, well, you say this and you do this and it makes me feel this. Now just go into it with a very calm approach and just say, brother, I love you, but I think we're going in different directions. It's time we part. And so I just had that very hard but, but necessary conversation. You know, sadly, this can even happen with family sometimes. And I hear this a lot. And I talk to a lot of people in the DMs or clients I'm coaching about this too. And well, what if it's family? And you know, sadly, we've had to cut off a couple family members as well. And I think you need to follow the same kind of process. You need to ask yourself, why am I allowing this? And then have that very hard talk with them. You know, there's a season in life where even my mom and I, you know, my mom's one of my great, great person, great, greatest friends in life. And I love my mom to death. Even her and I had some difficult conversations when I decided to drop out of college and play poker where we just didn't see eye to eye on things. We just had to agree and have a mutual respect during that season of life that we weren't going to talk about it, that we were just going to talk about other things. And, you know, I didn't want to be coming home and getting guilt tripped every time I came home that I dropped out of college and that was a disappointment or this or that. And I'm sure she didn't want to hear about all my successes of poker and how I was in Vegas doing this crazy stuff and this crazy stuff. So we just had a mutual respect and a talk that we weren't going to talk about that, that that was off the table. Even in marriage, this is a thing, right? When COVID happened, my wife and I did not see eye to eye on a lot of this stuff. So we just set, you know, we had a mutual respect and just said, hey, these are some things that we're just, we're just not going to talk about. Who cares? We don't need to agree on everything. So if you can be mature adults and just realize, hey, you know what? We're not agree going to agree on everything and that's okay. Let's just take this off the table. And that's awesome. And, and then you have to adhere to that. And you have to set those healthy boundaries and align with those moving forward. But if that person continues to push past those boundaries, continues to steal your peace, continues to put you down, be negative, not support you, encourage you in the best version of you, even if it's a family member, I would just urge you to say, for this season, we're just not, we're not going to be close. We're not, that's, I'm going to have to choose myself and my growth and prioritize my peace. I think ultimately, if you want to get to where you want to go in life, it always comes at a cost. Snoozing is easy. I'd rather, I'd honestly rather spoon my wife every day than get up and go to the gym. It's harder. Eating the good, healthy food every day for lunch, of course, pizza and nachos and, you know, whatever other good stuff, you know, cookies. Of course, that stuff is going to taste better. But I always say easy has a cost. And there's, there's, a, there's a thing here too with, you know, if you avoid these difficult conversations and you avoid having them, that easy has a cost and it drains your peace and it really robs your joy and it, it stops you from becoming the best version of yourself. So I would urge you today to really take a hard look. Look at your surroundings, look at your inner circle, look at your family and ask, do they promote the best me? Are they building me up? Are they encouraging me? Are they giving me life? And if not, why am I allowing it? I would just urge you again today to take action and to just say, hey, if, I'm, if I want to be the best version of myself, I'm going to follow these steps. I might have to have some hard, difficult conversations, but ultimately my peace is worth it. My growth is worth it. Hope you guys go have the greatest day of your life. Bless up, be kind, and let's go get it, baby. Have the best day.